ashes of their world, we'll build a better one. If you're one of those people who clicked on the video, read Gifted in the title, and then thought, oh no, there's not going to be any spoilers. Well, uh, first off, you're a dumbass. And second off, turn off the video, put it on like your watch later list, go watch the show or go through your life and then eventually get caught up and then come back. Now when the show was first announced, I initially wasn't all that interested because I thought it was going to be some Generation X bullshit. You know that shitty old pilot Marvel made back in the day where they had to avoid using the term mutant so they wouldn't get sued out their asses by Fox. Funny how things work out, huh? <laughs> now when the first episode aired, I didn't watch it because, you know, I thought it would be shit and stuff. It wasn't until I went on Twitter and saw everyone saying how it was like X-Men on TV and I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Fuck it. And boy, oh boy, were they right. The show was actually opposite of what I expected. It actually embraced its comic book roots. Gone are the days where Brian Singer would make a movie about a comic book and then be all embarrassed about it and try to hide it to the best of his abilities. And it's about damn time. I mean, we literally pay money just to watch a raccoon with a machine gun and a talking tree fuck around for two hours. Not only does this show use characters like Blink and Polaris, but also they use terms such as X-Men and Mutant, something that Generation X never had the balls to do. But it's not just the X-Men and Mutants as well. They reference other groups, such as the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Although they just call them the Brotherhood, because it's like, uh, if you really believe in your cause, uh, why would you call yourself evil? Then there's obviously, like, the other groups, like Trask and, like, Sentinel Services, which is taking the name from those robots from the future that buff fuck everyone. Not only are there great comic book references, but the story itself is actually pretty fucking good. Now obviously with a story about mutants being persecuted, there's going to be political undertones. Now before you go running into the comments and complaining about how I'm a retard and that Mr. Poopy Butthole should have been elected president, I want you to remember that I am billions upon billions of light years away from you, viewing your tiny speck of a planet from my hollow TV and my starship. I am a half krill, half crab crossbreed. And I know nothing about politics. And I don't give a fuck. Now with that being said, I think this show handles politics very well. Now obviously the show has a bias towards one specific group. But it still goes out of its way to flesh out each and every group's viewpoints. With the Hellfire Club believing that humans are dickheads and that mutants are far superior and ought to just cap them all off. Meanwhile, the humans are terrified of a mutant uprising, having seen the actions of, of the Hellfire Club and the accidents caused by mutants. And the mutant underground wanting peace and wanting to live together with the humans cohesively. There are obviously some comparisons that can be made between the 1960s and the events of the show, and then the events of the show and nowadays. The Hellfire Club could act as an allegory for ISIS just going around fucking murdering infidels. And the humans in the show compared to the U.S. government fearing refugees and being scared that ISIS is going to sneak in amongst them. We get to see characters in their backstories from all sides of the debate, allowing us to see why they think and act the way they do. The main story follows a douchebag family who ignored mutant suffering for, for as long as they could until their kids wind up being mutants and they realize, oh shit, we should probably start caring now. In the beginning, the main family didn't really interest me as they all kind of acted as a generic family. But as we get deeper in, we see that the parents are still just generic characters who feel empathy for other people. Blech. The two characters in the family that I found mainly interesting are the two kids, and even in the beginning they were still kind of boring. Like Andy Strucker is just your generic 14 year old who likes to skateboard and beatbox and play Call of Duty. And Lauren Strucker is a generic 16 or 17, I can't be bothered to remember, your old girl who likes boys and being social, I, I guess. It's not until they learn more about their powers and then shit hits the fan that they get interesting. 
Andy in particular goes full blown emo, and I half expected to see him walking around the safe house like this. I mean, look at these two. They look like they could be cousins. What I mainly like about these characters is that they all have one traumatic event in, in which one of their friends gets shot and it's kind of their fault. And then we see how it affects them both differently. I've always been interested in media and how one event can change people differently. I kind of like the idea that, that you are responsible for your actions and that it's not the circumstances that made you, but rather how you reacted to them. Now as for the other characters in the Mutant Underground, I find Blink kind of funny because she's so feisty, yet her power is literally only used for cowardice reasons such as running away or sneaking into places. And as for Thunderbird, I don't really have much to say about his personality, but uh, I think he definitely got the longest stick as far as his powers go. I mean, he's got super strength and he can track people. What can he not do? Eclipse and, and Polaris' relationship is particularly interesting. Well, first off, because they seem to be made for each other, judging based on their powers. But also because they're so focused on their family and wanting what's best for their baby. And in the end, they both have different views of what they, of the world they want for their baby. And it breaks their relationship. Polaris seems to want to take a step into the dark side and try it out for a bit. But Eclipse seems to be all like, nope, been there, done that, for when he worked for the mob. And also that time he was Apocalypse. The only other mutant underground person I want to talk about is this weird bearded homeless guy who could turn invisible. What a fucking douchebag. He has this whole character arc in which he learns to accept Reed Strucker, only later on hate his fucking family again. Like Jesus man, what the fuck? Now as for the humans, there's this character named Jace Turner who I absolutely want to punch in his fucking stupid face. It takes this man until his wife yells at him about how what the fuck are you doing in the name of our child for him to realize, oh shit, I fucked up. Like, um, yeah, you think? Now his motivation in the second half of the season, I actually understood. Because if I went to go help the mutants and all of a sudden one showed up and killed all my buddies, then yeah, I'd probably be all like, ah, fuck this shit. Let's kill them all. Now there's this character played by Garrett Dillahunt that I just can't believe at all. Now I'm not sure if it's me or if it's just his acting and he's not good at playing a super smart homicidal uh, maniac. Prior to this, I had only seen him in Raising Hope where he played the retard dad. So seeing him jump from retard dad who we laugh at to super genius evil guy who kills people, it was just kind of like, what the fuck? I half expected him to shit his pants in half of his scenes. Now I think there's only one, or I guess three characters in the Hellfire Club that are actually worth talking about. You know, I've gotten lazy, you know, and I just don't want to bother looking up the names on Google anymore. So I'm just gonna like refer to this person as like the triplets or whatever. Fuck it. These characters convince a whole shit ton of people, Polaris and Andy included, into joining up with the Hellfire Club. Despite the fact that they like to use their telepathic mutant power to use people's memories and thoughts in, against them in order to persuade them into doing their bidding. I would expect that kind of shit from Andy, you know, but from Polaris? Like, what the hell? How did you fall for that shit? Although I must admit, I'm not the best guy to be talking about these characters, as I wasn't really paying attention to what they were saying whenever they were on screen, because I was too mesmerized by their looks, and then questioning my crab duality. Krill duality? I don't know. I'm not sure who plays you, because I'm too lazy to Google it, but damn, girl, you smoking. But overall, as you can tell, I really enjoyed this show, and I'm kind of sad to see it go. But at the same time, I also absolutely fucking hate when shows go for 20 episodes or something, because then eventually you get a bunch of retard-ass episodes, and then it gets a huge build-up to the end, and then it's all disappointing. <coughs> Flash! Oh man, I think there's dust bunnies up in this ship. I really should clean it, Jesus. But I think the main takeaway should be that regardless of whether or not if I'm a krill or a crab, I still would fuck the shit out of those triplets. So uh, if you got any opinions on this, uh, keep them to yourself. No one fucking cares. I, I mean, I guess you can leave them in the comments section, but I probably won't read them because I'm just busy. So fucking busy. Oh yeah, and uh, like and subscribe, I guess.